they greeted us with song and dance and they were just so grateful to have us come visit them. In this farming village in Uganda, women and children spend most of their day collecting water, walking a mile or more, often alone, back and forth to a shallow pond. If it dries up, they walk even further. So that meant they couldn't go um, to school, they couldn't go to work, they, they would just have to spend all their time just getting water. It was uh, cloudy, dirty, gray, it smelled bad. We saw a frog, um, a dead frog. I mean, it was just, it was horrific. I guess if we saw, let's say, a, a pond in the middle of a cow field that was filled with algae and lily pads, we would never think to dip our water bottle in and take a sip in there, that's what they were forced to do. Um, so they deal with waterborne diseases like typhoid, bilzaria, um, all kinds of things and you can see it, you can visually see it in the children. They all have swollen stomachs and they're all getting sick. And so yeah, I think about them every day. I mean, my background on my phone is those kids. It's just, I don't know. Hoping to change lives with clean water, Heidi Lemieux, founder and president of Engineers Without Borders New Hampshire, has begun a passion project. So we brought, so these are our safety glasses that we brought for drilling. The environmental engineer is organizing trips to Uganda to dig wells for nine villages. So as we were leaving um, one of the villages, they came out and kind of presented this to us as a gift. Heidi's colleague, hydrogeologist Lily Korenthal, helped with the water testing on the mission. Their co-workers at Sanborn Head and Concord wished them well as they embarked on their African trip. Bon voyage, have a whole lot of fun. It might be boring. You're amazing people doing amazing work. <laughs> also on the traveling team, Portsmouth civil engineer Jody Bray Strickland and scientist Heather Ballestero. After a two-year fundraising effort to pay for the drilling, Engineers Without Borders hope to install wells in three villages. Tensions are high, you never really know if something's gonna fail or if we're gonna hit it or even if we do hit water, we see it, but is it gonna be enough? You know, there were several occasions that they were like, I hope you understand, like this is life changing. You know, there are grandmothers in this village who never thought that they would see the day that their children and their grandchildren would have this clean water to drink. It's it's so amazing. It's, you know, the, the impact is, is really huge. The first time they heard the drill rig, it's such a loud noise that they're not used to it, but they all just scattered and sprinted away because they didn't know what, to, what was going on. Eventually, they came back and gathered around the drill, waiting patiently for something to happen. And finally, it did. Seeing the drill rig hit water and water coming out of the ground was so emotional. Um, I couldn't stop crying. And to see the women, their response in the village to finding water too was, it was amazing. The people are the Muso Musoga people and they say when a Musoga woman is happy, she'll dance and she'll move her hips and that's how she shows her joy and they're screaming and dancing and it's, everyone is emotional. What they're dancing for and what they're celebrating is, is a new life. It's something that they've never had access to clean water before and they were just so excited and so happy. Um, and it was really cool to be a part of that. While on site, the team made alterations to the way they dressed. All of the women in the villages wear skirts. Um, it's just kind of their culture, and so we wanted to, to blend in with the culture. We didn't want to offend anybody, so we also wore skirts every day, which was quite a sight at a drill site, I will say, because when you drill in America, it's your steel toe boots, your work pants, your safety vest, but we were all in dresses and skirts. <laughs> the villagers were so grateful to have clean water that they gave the team something that they value greatly. Chickens and roosters, and we got a turkey, I think. Um, so, it would, and it was just, again, as far as the cultural, it would be so rude of us not to accept their gift, but it's also heartbreaking because they don't eat chicken very often. They don't have a lot of them. As a sign of respect there, they'll, people will get on their knees as they shake your hands. So we'd be surrounded by a group of older women all on their knees shaking our hands, you know, with little babies on their backs. And it was just really emotional and heartbreaking, but also felt really fortunate to be a part of it. We need to take the grease and grease that chain. During their visit, Engineers Without Borders held training sessions on well maintenance. The Ugandans are expected to perform upkeep and pay for 5% of the project. Where we set up these water user committees and they're responsible for 
collecting fees for people who are using the wells, um, doing monthly maintenance, tightening bolts, making sure the concrete pad doesn't have any cracks so there's no source of uh, contamination directly above the well. And they, they did so much. They helped build the fencing, they helped build the concrete pad, they really took ownership of it. Um, so it's motivating to see that they're not just looking at this as a charity case, they really want to take it on and make it their own and change their lives. The first or second day after I got back, I was at a site in the snow um, and it was me and two drillers and a rig in an empty parking lot. <laughs> um, and so I sent Heidi a text saying, where's everyone dancing? Where are all my friends? <laughs> um, Since their return, the team members can't stop thinking of those they've helped. The group is more determined than ever to raise the funds to bring clean water to another six villages in need. It's really motivating and it's really exciting to see how something as simple as um, installing a well can make such a big difference in so many people's lives. To support the mission of Engineers Without Borders New Hampshire or to join the cause, visit EWBNH.org.